Automation for Coaches is a business specifically de designed to build automations and integrate automations into fitness coaches' businesses. And over the last year alone, we've built over a thousand different automations for fitness coaches. And one of the biggest areas to look to automate to increase number of sales calls coming through and ultimately increase the revenue in the business is the sales process. One aspect of the sales process would be posting the day's sales schedule into a Slack channel, say, to then easily allow team members, or if it's simply a, a one-man band running the business, allow that individual to, to monitor that day's schedule. So the way that it would work is you need a series of softwares. You need Calendly to take call bookings. You need that connected up to Zoom. And then um, you need Slack to then post that schedule in. If you're not taking calls on Zoom and you're doing them via phone, I would 110% recommend moving across to Zoom. It's a lot more personal, especially if you're selling higher price points. We work with a wide range of coaches from those just starting out to those earning multiple millions a year from the fitness industry and selling pr programs and services for multiple four figures, potentially even five figures. And the ones doing that, they sell via Zoom because they can be a lot more personal. Slack, internal communication, you need, need to start using Slack from a team perspective. It's incredibly easy to build a team. And then Zapier is the one software that basically brings everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and literally run through step by step how you could literally copy and paste this into your business. So the way that Zapier works is we, we create what's called a Zap. A Zap is basically a long list of tasks that perform that task automatically. And the way that it works is you have a trigger, something that starts the automation off, followed by a series of actions that happen following that trigger being triggered. So in this case, we'd want it, if we were posting the sales schedule, we'd want it to trigger based off a new booking being created in Calendly. So in this case, when an invitee is created in Calendly, so when someone books into our Calendly account, it then triggers the automation. Naturally, we have literally hundreds of different calls being booked daily, be that client calls, be that internal calls, be that onboarding calls, be that intro calls, be that walkthrough calls, lead gen calls. We, we've got a, a crazy amount of different calls being booked. And for the coaches we work with, so, so do they. They've got multiple different consult calls for different coaches, for different closers. They've got internal catch-up calls. They've got a load of different calls. So if you didn't have step two here, you didn't have the filter, it would simply continue for all call booking events in Calendly, which obviously isn't ideal. So you need this second step here to filter. This basically filters the event type name of number one containing whatever the phrase is. So let's say, for example, you run a call called um, a weekly catch up call. You would then simply have here if the event type name of one contains weekly catch up, then continues if you wanted that to then trigger the automation. Then what we can see here is it basically creates that lead on a specific Trello board. So we basically have a Trello board, which is a sales pipeline that literally tracks all the leads coming through at each stage. So I could open it up and see, right, we've got X amount of leads in the booked call stage, X amount of leads in the converted, X amount of leads in the unconverted. And we can even see how much potential monetary value is associated with each lead, depending on which product they've been pitched. And then also as a result of that, the overall pipeline value. So we can see that, right, X amount of potential revenue is sat in book calls right now. X amount of potential revenue is sat in converted leads. X amount of, um, sorry, closed revenue is sat in converted leads. X amount of missed out revenue is sat in unconverted leads. Then that way it gives an aspect of predictability to the business. So what I mean by that is, so what I mean by that is this. So this is a demo board to give you an understanding. So let's say, for example, your sales pipeline looks like inquiry process, booked call, converted, unconverted. We can have this process literally built. So as a lead progresses through each stage, they automatically move across. So a lead applies, they drop into this applied section. If they don't book their call within 30 minutes, they're followed up with an email. When they book their call, they automatically move across. And at each stage, when that lead inputs data, so when they apply the date, the answers are added. When they book their call, the date and time is added. And then even to the point that a specific value can be associated with each lead. So like I said, we work with a wide range of coaches, some just starting out to those earning multiple millions. And naturally, obviously, price points different. Some coaches charging a few hundred pounds a month, 
for those charging literally five figures for their coaching program. Average retention rate for fitness coaches is between six and 12 months. Say you sat in the middle of that at nine months. And then let's say, for example, on average, you charge 200 pound a month. So then the lifetime value of that client in theory would be worth 1.8K. So that lead can be assigned a value. So you can see that this pipeline value is worth 3.4K. But if this lead didn't book their call, they'd be worth 1.6K in the applied section. And this pipeline value will adjust shortly to then give you a perspective of the value of all the leads at each stage. So that's where this lead is then being added into from that Zapier automation. And then following this, a specific label is added to that card dependent on the stage that they're associated with. So if they're say a booked call lead, they're then labeled lead. If, they're then, if they then close, they move to the converted station and get labeled closed. If they're um, unconverted, vice versa, it gets labeled and assigned accordingly. Then they're assigned to a specific member dependent on which team member they've booked a call with. So if they say book a call with um, one of our team members, they get assigned that specific team member on Trello so we can see who's taking the call. And then the, the team member also gets notified that the call's been booked with them. A specific comments added to this card that we've created. So then it says the time and date and the event name that that call's been booked. That lead that's booked the call is updated in active campaigns. So then they're sent a drip of emails pre-call to sell the call, to break down any sort of objections pre-call, but also then um, sort of run through the benefits of the call, not, not really the program, but the call, because then the, the show rates of the call are going to be even better. And then on that call, obviously, the program is then potentially sold. So then it's easy to increase show rates because the call is being sold, the value of it, because it's ridiculously valuable for coaches. And then on the call, obviously, the program sold. So then for fitness coaches, um, that could then send them out an email drip before to their leads before calls. And then also updating tags onto that specific contact and active campaign. So it's easy to see overall which leads have booked calls in active campaign and then let's say for example you did a regular email marketing campaign to, to leads there it'd be easy to filter out which leads you want to send it to and exclude the ones that are currently booking in for sales calls and you so, so you can then simply filter which sort of email marketing campaigns are being sent then basically a message is posted in a slack channel with all the booking information all the the, the lead data everything like that into a Slack channel so the team get notified. Then um, the contact is made in Google Contacts, which automatically syncs up to my phone contacts in my phone. So I'll then literally open up my phone and then um, type it, go into contacts and that lead would literally already be there. So then it's incredibly easy to outbound pre-sales calls to just confirm the call booking. Then we use Monday as a CRM system in addition to Trello. It has a huge list of benefits Monday, so I would highly recommend. But basically, then the, uh, an item is created in Monday and then updated with all the call booking details as well. So then the team can see that visually as well. Then we use a numbers format to pull out the specific um, date and time of the booking. So the way Calendly book it is that the, when it's booked, the formatting is not always the way that we want to visually see it. So we use a numbers format. And the date, um, so the numbers format to basically format the date so it looks more visually appealing. We update that in our spreadsheet that tracks all the leads in the business. We then basically format the date here. So we take the end, uh, we, we take the, sorry, the start time of this booking here in step one, and we minus um, a specific period of time from it be that 24 hours if we wanted to get alerted 24 hours before, be that 12 hours if we want to get alerted 12 hours before. And then we basically just delay until that specific time. So in our case, what we do is we format the numbers. So we, we format the date, sorry. So we simply just get the date and we exclude the time. We then delay until that specific date at the specific time, which in our case is 7 a.m. Um, London time because we're based in London time zone, but whatever time zone you're obviously based in, that can be adjusted to. And then we use the text format to format the message we're about to post in the Slack channel. And then we post it in the Slack channel at that specific time. So then what you can see here, we have the trigger, we have the filter, all these tasks literally run. 
And then the automation will literally sit here and wait until, in our case, 7 a.m. on the date of that call booking before posting that message in the Slack channel. So I can open up, I open up Slack, I can wake up, open up Slack, and literally at 7 a.m., bang, I've got a, a message with all the, the, the calls booked in for that day. So it's incredibly easy to stay on top of all that and manage staff members as well. So as you can see here, for every single call booking that we have coming to the business, we have 18 tasks that would be manual, literally fully automated. And that's just simply one call booking coming in. So in the business as a whole, automating over 20,000 tasks a month is ridiculously time effective. And it means I can obviously then pivot my time into tasks that are going to be higher ROI for the business and move the business forwards more. But inside your fitness business, if you don't currently have a system like that, I would highly suggest that you do. It will make your sales process a lot more efficient because leads will naturally show up to calls better. Your show rate will be better. It will be easier to close them because there'll be more water into the process. And then if you then, as, as you scale and if you build out a team, it's then incredibly easy to manage your team if you have these automations running in the background.